Hi, in this video, let's try to see some actual sensor interfacing with ESP32. As you know, the primary purpose, primary motive of this course is to learn Internet of Things or IoT applications and therefore having sensors values which we can send over internet or to some other place is a vital part of this course. Let's start. Now, there are different type of sensors available and depending upon how much you have already done in embedded systems, you can correlate with these things. Although, I will give a perspective of a complete pressures. Uh, if you have some bit of experience, then you will be easily able to understand. And even if you are completely pressures, it's particularly for you. No, don't worry. So, there are basically two types of sensors which we interface with microcontrollers. One is called as an analog sensor, which can give a specified voltage, which relates to the applied analog input. For example, there is a temperature sensor called LM35, which gives 10 millivolt per degree Celsius. So, if my room temperature currently is 25 degree Celsius, it will give an output of 250 millivolt. To interface microcontroller with this kind of sensors, what we need is we need to use an E2D converter or analog to digital converter, which can convert this value into a particular digital output, which then can be used to understand the sensor value and perform the related or required operations based upon it. Then there are digital sensors. Digital sensors also come in different types and the most popular or the most simplest one it's something called as a very basic one zero output sensor. So I will not be covering these sensors because they are pretty straightforward to use. So there can be a fire sensor, there can be a sound sensor, there can be any such kind of sensor which just directly gives an output of logic one when they sense something or output of logic zero when they don't sense something. PIR sensor is also one such thing which can be used to detect the presence of a human body inside a room or something like that. And then comes the most interesting part which the sensors which gives digital data over some kind of protocol. Maybe they give you data on protocols like one wire, SPI, I2C or maybe they give you data in terms of the width of the signal like ultrasonic sensors. Now let's try to understand some sensor with ESP32. Now for the scope of this course, I am particularly not going to cover the analog inputs and there is a reason for it. I hope you will uh, be able to relate with that. And the reason is the analog input on ESP32 tools are not that well documented. You will be disturbed, you will be confused by looking at a lot of different tutorials online. So some of them will say it will read from 0 to 3.3 .3 volts. Some of them will say it will read from 0 to 1.1 1 .1 volt. And most importantly, even if you figure out all the documentations and understand how to use it, the end result is the ESP32 analog input pins are totally nonlinear. So you will not be able to differentiate between the voltages very well. It is okay to use analog input for uh, academic projects or just for the studies case but that's not the scope of this course I want you to understand ESP32 and start creating industrial grade project as well so my clear suggestion is if you at all want to use an analog input then please go and use an external ADC chip for the scope of this course I'm not going to include analog voltages but I'll keep adding different videos on ESP32 in the course as well as on the YouTube channel which will showcase how we can interface with different sensors. Now, for the scope of this course, I am going to use BHT22 temperature and humidity sensor. The reason being, first, it is very easy to interface with ESP and second thing is, it is very easily available across the world. It is cheaper and you will get it almost everywhere. Moreover, if you look at the popularity of DHT22, you can see the official tutorials of IoT provided by Microsoft Azure as well as Amazon AWS also includes this one sensor with controller which can demonstrate the data sending onto the cloud. So let's try to understand DHT22 for this course. So I have these two sensors with me currently. 
one is called as DHT22 and the blue one which you can see here it's called as DHT11. It is uh, I'm just going to show this to you for comparison. So DHT22 looks like this white big one and the DHT11 is smaller. Usually we don't use DHT11 nowadays because it is not so accurate. The range of sensing is also not so good and therefore DHT22 is kind of a standard thing to use. Now how you can use DHT22? Let's try to understand some basic specifications first. So it has a very wide operating temperature range or the sensing range I would say that is from minus 40 degree to 80 degree Celsius. It can sense 0 to 100 percent of humidity. It works on 3 to 6 volt operating voltage and it has a very good resolution of reading the values. Moreover, the connection of DHT22 is also very simple. If you look at it, this is actually a module. Okay. So the sensor itself is a four wire sensor as you can see over here or in this image it was focused. Not now, let me. So it looks like this which has got pin number one, two, three, four. Pin number 1 is VCC, pin number 2 is data, 3 is not connected and 4 is ground. The pin number 2 that is data pin, it can go to any GPIO of ESP32 with a 10k pull up. So the schematic if you want, it should be looking like this. If you get just the sensor, this one, then you need to create a schematic like this. But what I have here is a module. Now let me just get closer to it. So we can focus it well. So on the module, if you check, focus. You can see there are only three pins, ground, VCC and data. And the required pull up resistor is already available over here. So depending upon if you are getting a module or if you are getting a particular uh, sensor directly the sensor itself you have to choose which you want to go for now let me make the connections first so that it becomes easier for us to start experimenting so here i insert it into the vcc pin the red one and i'm going to connect it to 3.3 volt so i have some male to male female to male wires here to make my life easier and I connected it to 3.3 volt right over here. Now I am going to use another combination of male female to create a larger wire. And this one I will use as data pin. I am going to connect the data pin to, you can ideally connect it to any GPIO. But I am particularly using this pin a lot. So it's DA, SCL, 14, 32. So just let me connect it to 14. Basically, it doesn't matter actually where you connect it. So, let it be. The number 14, I am connecting it to. No, I made mistakes. So, it is SCL, SDA, SCL and this is 14. And lastly, I want to connect a ground pin. So, make sure when you are using the wires or connections, then try to keep your wiring simple so that you can understand it. I don't have much color coded wires here as a luxury but okay. My DHT22 sensor is now connected. Once you have DHT22 connected all you need to do is you need to install some libraries in order to read the sensor and display the values on serial port. That's what we are going to do now. So the two libraries you are going to need is DHT sensor library by Adafruit and Adafruit unified sensor library. Now let's let's test the waters. So let's open Arduino. And here uh, let me just take a new sketch, completely new one. And I will save it as DHT22 test. I am just going to call it as DHT22 test and let's try to see the output of it. First of all, go to sketch, include library and manage libraries. Here you will have to search for these libraries which are stated. 
So what are they? DHT sensor library by Adafruit and Adafruit unified sensor library. So DHT, I'll just type here DHT and I'll get all the DHT related libraries available. As a part of experimentation, you are free to use any other libraries also. I am going to use Adafruit libraries because I am using the Adafruit's board. So this is DHT sensor library by Adafruit. Just install. Now see, it is also asking you that it depends on unified sensor library. So better if we have it here itself, install all. So we have installed the DHT as well as unified sensor library. Now simply go to file, examples, here you will find the installed library. So Adafruit DHT sensor library and let's say DHT tester. Now I am going to copy this code completely over here in my test code. Let us simplify things a bit, okay. Uh, let me just remove the unwanted comment first. So that it becomes easier for us to understand. You can anyways go to the documentation later on. So this is DHT pin and this is DHT type. And then there are just the values being read. Float H is humidity, float T is temperature. I don't want any other stuffs coming in here and just want to print it. Okay. So let's keep it simple. So humidity is H, percentage, and then temperature is T that is degree celsius nothing else that we want not heat index nothing 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 and let's just have a delay of two seconds so it is already there in the beginning of the code so all we need to do is download this code where i have connected the dht sensor i just need to mention that pin number so it is four pin for sure so let's put the dht pin to be 14 and we are done so you can read the function here all we have is these two functions which will enable us to read the temperature as well as humidity from the sensor so let's try to upload this code now and see the output The code is being compiled. Sometimes you may get impatient sometimes about the operating of uh, or the downloading process. With ESP32, it's a little bit definitely slower as compared to the regular Arduino boards. Now the compilation is almost about to be done. It will start uploading the code into the board. And then we'll be able to see the output. It's uploading now. Connecting, writing, 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 done. Let's open serial port. Now see, it is not able to read anything. You need to be prepared with this also. Now this is a problem. And I am on purpose not going to omit this problem. Or not going to edit this video. Because this is going to happen with most of us when you connect the dht sensor for the first time we may not get the output correctly we may get something wrong something is mistaken so what you have to do here is you have to check for the power cables correctly and then also check the data pin being connected correctly also i have missed to print a new line here so i'll do that and meanwhile i'll keep checking the wiring now as you can see now I have made some changes, okay. I directly installed the sensor on breadboard and uh, there is some issue on my breadboard. I am not able to connect to this pin very well. 
So what I have done is I am using pin number 27 now and now I can see the output. Now this is a very simple experiment. You can also try to increase the humidity by blowing some vapor onto it. If you can see the humidity increased to 78, 83, 82 and the temperature remains the same. So temperature is basically the room temperature. If I blow small air through it, let's see if it changes the temperature a bit. Not much change to the temperature I would say. But my camera lens is little bit heated because it is on for some time. So let's let me touch it to the camera and let me see if I can notice some change. So sensing element is inside. So you will have to have hot air going through this. So therefore it is a very perfect candidate for sensing the room temperature and humidity inside your house. So this is DHT22 you might need to make changes according to your code. Now I'm connecting it here on pin number 27 and now the breadboard connection at pin number 27 is working well. Also my sensor is a bit old maybe uh, it was not connecting well with the wires so I have directly mounted it onto the breadboard. Now this is how you can get the humidity and temperature values through DHT22 sensor. But this is just the start of or beginning of the story. Similarly, there can be a number of different sensors which can be used. So this is a very simple sound sensor. As I said, it simply gives logic output, 1 or 0. And this is a proximity sensor. It gives one output, logic 1 or logic 0, whenever you put a hand in front of it. And then there are a number of different sensors which can be used to get different values. What we are going to do is, we are going to keep two setups common. One is the DHT22 sensor and the other one is this, our bulb. And using these two setups, we will be performing a number of different experiments which are related to IoT. So that's about it for this video. Try to do the DHT22 interfacing yourself and see if this code works for you. Thank you for watching this video.